Hello everybody, we are now here with the algorithmic guys, Fred and Nicolas, and uh, to kick it off, uh, start by telling us a little bit about the company, how you got started and your main focus today. Um, yeah, uh, about the company, we've been created in 2003. Uh, we uh, do uh, software, 3D software, texturing software. Uh, today we are a world leader talking about uh, the video game industry uh, with more than 85% uh, of AAA studio that are using our software to texture the major uh, blockbuster uh, video games. Uh, and we've been uh, focusing since the last two years in the architecture and design industries. Okay, so uh, initially obviously focused on gaming and now trying to expand and uh, can you m maybe tell us from your perspective what kind of strengths in your software are going to solve weaknesses that we as Archivist artists have in our workflow? What kind of, I don't know, maybe name three things that we can benefit greatly from a tool such as the one you make? Well, um, usually what people do right now, they use photographs and sometimes the, m the material they want to achieve, uh, they just don't have photos for that, so it doesn't exist or you it doesn't have the same, the, the good quality. So sometimes you have to really do things from scratch and you don't have choice and the tools that exist today, uh, well, you have Photoshop, but it's not meant for, for texturing. And designer is really good at uh, managing geometrics, geometric patterns, and yeah, noises, patterns, stuff like that. And it's really good at that. And because of the 3D uh, preview, you can really visualize, pre-visualize your material before importing it, importing it uh, in the 3ds Max or whatever. So this, this way, you can very really fine-tune your materials uh, very quickly. And also, the last point is uh, the tiling. In a designer, everything tiles automatically. We have some nodes that make the bitmaps tiles uh, automatically as well. So you just don't have to worry about tiling. And that's something that we, I mean, people struggle with is, is tiling. So my three points. Yeah, maybe I can uh, add something. Uh, this is a procedural material, so it means that uh, you have a material, but it's actually an infinity of materials, because inside you have parameters that you can tweak infinitely. So if we take the example of uh, uh, a brick, for instance, you want to make a, uh, a wall in brick, you can change the parameters, choose the brick you want, choose the size of the joint, the color, the height, everything. So every material you have uh, makes you have an infinity of materials, which is really interesting compared to just an image you, which is dead information, actually. And if I go back to something you mentioned in your uh, presentation, uh, PBR, when it's mentioned in, in the Archviz industry, was uh, related mostly to defining a way of doing shaders, but PBR is much more than just the shaders, so can you maybe explain a little bit about the scope of PBR? And also, uh, when someone starts using uh, Substance Designer, then the learning curve, uh, is, it, is it hard, is it easy? Do you provide some kind of a preset of library that someone can just, you know, dive in and learn more easily how to uh, integrate that into the workflow. So, so about PBR, so yeah, PBR is not just materials, it's uh, lights, it's camera, it's uh, render workflow. Uh, so yeah, um, there are lots of concepts linked to PBR. And actually, uh, renderers make physically based renders since a long time. But people maybe not, uh, maybe pe people don't uh, feed the renders with correct information. And um, uh, that's what we provide is a way to make uh, physically accurate materials. Um, I mean, energy conservation, final and, and so on. They visualize the, the, the material as a physically based, uh, physically accurate render. And uh, when you export your materials from designer, you are sure that you don't break any law. So, yeah, PBR is new. It's new in uh, real time. And 
I think that uh, because of real time, people start really uh, understanding uh, the benefits of doing things really close to reality. And uh, what was the second question? Uh, uh, the learning curve. Yes, yeah, some some kind of ways to learn tutorials, preset of materials that people can just you know uh, figure out by breaking breaking apart some kind of presets. Uh, we have a YouTube channel with lots and lots of tutorials uh, made by uh, Wes McDermott. Uh, so we have playlists. Uh, I think we have seen people in in a day or two by just watching tutorials. Uh, learning the software at a very decent level. And then it's just a matter of practicing. I think that uh, in a few days you, you get already all the, the basics and start making uh, nice looking stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, what we can add is that for the architecture uh, industry, uh, we know that those guys uh, don't have time to work. Uh, they can't, like maybe in the video game industry today, have you know artists that can spend hours to create an environment. They they have five days to do an image. They they don't have that time. They will take the time during their career to uh, to be a, uh, an artist like Nicola is. Uh, so that's why we created this architectural library where they can find all the materials they need to work every day. So yeah, in two or three days, Nicolas or the guys that will do a training will be uh, able to make them use the software and start creating their first materials. So that's great to answer your question, two or three days. But with this library, they can work. They can write red, do walls, floor, uh, roof, ceilings, etc. So that is great. Uh, any, any plans for the future specifically for architecture visualization that you can share with us? in your roadmap uh, ahead? Um, so <laughs> sorry, but uh, again, talking about this library, today uh, the, uh, the aim of this library was to have 80% of what the guys need. Uh, the idea in the next few months is to have 100% and then uh, have some more exotic materials because when you do uh, an image in ArchViz, you always are looking for you know, this material that is so particular in our image. Um, so we will increase that. Then, um, do you think about something? Yeah. Uh, in Simpsons Designer 5.5, you have added an MDL editor. So MDL is a material definition language that has been created by NVIDIA. And maybe uh, this material definition language will become a standard in the in industry. So for now, it's supported by IRA. Uh, VUA is, uh, I mean, Case Group has uh, announced uh, the support for MDL. Uh, Corona has spoken about it as, as well, and Redshift, and so we see a, a tendency from the renderers uh, uh, publisher to adopt uh, this uh, material definition language. So it's very, uh, I mean, it's a good, uh, a good news because at least uh, people will be able to uh, to share materials. And no matter the renderers, they will get the same result. And Substance Designer allows you to create these materials from scratch. So you can create multi-layer materials, all these uh, complex uh, car paint materials, you know. And yeah, that's something you can do in Designer. So you can mix substances and MDL and make very, very nice looking materials directly in Designer. Um. To wrap it up, I would ask, um, do, you, do you have people at the company, like they are only artists that are testing uh, the product or do you look for uh, people to join the company in that kind of a position like artists kind of trying to break and explore what the software can do for them? Um, we, um, we actually plan to, uh, to hire a lot of guys during the, the, in a couple of years. Uh, we today we have like 10 uh, position open uh, you can find on our website so have a look at that uh, then we can say that uh, in, in the company we have lots of artists uh, because what is complicated with uh, procedural materials is that you need guys that are very strong in mass but also artists uh, guys like Nicolas are first artist before being just product manager because to create uh, in 3D uh, a parquet floor, a wood or the procedural marbles you can find uh, on our website, you need to have this eye, this talent. 
So yeah, we are always looking for people that can do this particular job to be, uh, yeah, procedural guys, but also an artist. Yeah, most of the time. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope people that are interested in that will uh, approach you through the website, and uh, we'll see you in the next interview.